Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative with another Divi tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you eight different places to add custom code in Divi. So I'm going to be going over all of those and also showing you some of the hierarchy and the specificity there with Divi and the code and show you the best place that you should be adding code, especially as you follow along with our tutorials. You know, a lot of times I'll say to put code here or there. So this is going to be a great reference for you. So I hope you enjoy this. Let's get started. So the question of where to add code comes up a lot in my tutorials. So a lot of times I'll say something like, you know, I'm adding this code to the page settings here. Or I'm adding this code to theme options and things like that. And I really wanted to create a tutorial where it would kind of be like a main reference. So anytime I'm saying stuff like that, or if you're just doing code from other projects, you know where to put it. But I also wanted to cover something pretty important that I have never seen talked about anywhere in the Divi community, and that's CSS hierarchy. So I really want to start with that because it's really important as far as understanding, you know, when you get into CSS a little more, other codes, and you're wondering, you know, how to make something apply and it's just not quite working. That's called specificity and I'll probably say or spell that wrong sometime but it's when some one part of code in a certain location has more power you know it's higher up than code in another place and there's an order in Divi it's a specific order and I have it written out here and here it is inline styles have the most power yeah believe it or not you know when those have the most power right on the page and then ad the advanced tab of any section row column or module then the code module and the page settings kind of have the same um, hierarchy there and then theme options so there's you know a place for CSS and JavaScript and things like that so that's a lot of times I say to place it there that's gonna you know be less powerful than if you had it on the page right because this would affect the site this would be right there on that page so it would be stronger. Number four would be stronger than five, okay? And then child theme, and then the WordPress customizer, theme customizer, and then your parent theme, so Divi. So it's kind of in order of, um, it's not necessarily best place to add it to the worst place, but more of power and hierarchy, okay? Um, and we'll get into where to actually add it in the best places to add that. All right, so I wanted to go over that first, and and again, there's ways that you can override that. Um, you've probably seen, you know, there's an exclamation point, and then the word important, and you'll see that a lot of times overriding Divi styles, for example, and that's just a way of, um, you know, placing more hierarchy over it, more power over it, and overriding it. Um, the correct way to override styles. Um, if it's possible is to use specificity and that's by targeting um, little classes that um, kind of like a like a tree trunk like following like the little one up to the main one that type of thing um, so anyway we won't get into that so much now but let's go over each one of these things and talk about how you can use this in Divi so the first one here I just have inline styles um, and that's just like here, I'll, I'll just show you here real quick. If I was in here with a text module and let's say I wanted to make this here, I wanted to make this bold and I selected that, you could go in here and see that. So here it says strong. See how it added those tags? So those are inline styles. Um, another one might be if I want to make, if I want to make this green here. Okay. And, and those, you know, this, this is inline now. Because the whole thing isn't green, it's in line, just this where I'm telling it to be. So if I check that, you'll see here it's, it adds a span tag. So anytime you have inline things like that, you have a span tag. So it's saying style, which is CSS, and then equals color and then the hex color, okay? So that's how, that's inline styles. And technically those are the strongest because um, they're right there on the page. But that's you really want to use these sparingly. This, this isn't something that you want to... Um, use a lot of if you can help it so and then there's the advanced tab and this shows up all over the place in modules sections columns rows and all that and it's really helpful and it can be really handy at times um, it's a kind of a type of inline style the way it's outputted is actually a type of inline style so you, you really you really don't want to use this if you can help it that much I know it's very convenient but 
um, just use it sparingly also. I just wanted to show you. So, you know, like a, a lot of these modules in the advanced tab have this custom CSS and then before, main element, and after. All right, so if I wanted to like apply some CSS here, um, we could type it out like that, okay? So we're applying CSS, but you know, we know we have that, we have this particular setting in Divi background, but I'm just showing you. Okay, and then like in another module, like this blurb module, you have extra ones. So you have those ones that I mentioned, but then you have like blurb image, blurb title, blurb content, you add a couple more. And a lot of modules all have their own section here to add CSS. And let's not forget the handy little um, responsive tabs that they added. <laughs> these are really cool. You could add code just on um, one of these, okay? So anyway, an example of what I like to do sometimes, sometimes I'll have a blur module like this and I wanna get rid of that, but then I'm like, eh, I wish that lined up a little better. So I might come in here and say something like margin top 10 pixels. Yeah, and you can see how it moved it down. So that, that's an example of using the CSS boxes here. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next one would be the code module. And the code module is, um, uh, it's a module, so you can place it anywhere in your layout. And that can be handy, like let's say you want to embed a video or an iframe, um, things like that. In fact, like the Google Maps, like my tutorial here on the Google Maps embed code, that's an iframe actually that they're giving you and, and um, it's just showing you like a viewport into another website. So it's technically, you know, think of it as like a window into another website. So the code module works really good for things like that. And it's also great for short code. So don't forget that as well. So anytime, like, I don't know, like let's say you're using, you know, layer slider or something like that. And you had you know, you want to add it to your layout, you can come in here and add the short code, you know, the ones with brackets like that, all right? Short code, you know, the one, and then um, that would be a good place to add that, and that's a good use for the code module. All right, let's move on, and and thinking of hierarchy, the code module and the page setting CSS here would be similar. Now, with the code module, now, I, I should have said, you can add CSS and JavaScript in here. So you would, you would want to use the tag. So for, for CSS, it would be style, right? And then the cool thing is it kind of adds the ending bracket and you would, you would add your code here, you know, custom class and then whatever your, you know, your code is. So anyway, and it's the same thing for, um, um, if you were using JavaScript, you would say script like that. And then it even gives you that. Okay. So that's really handy. Um, to put that, but a lot of times I just recommend not putting it here unless you have to. Sometimes you have to, especially like if you wanted to save this and you wanted to save that code module and save it to the library, um, or you wanted to, I don't know, use this section on another site and you wanted to take the code with it that styled that section, sure, you can put it there. But anyway, the next one would be the page settings, like I started saying, and anytime. I'm doing my tutorials, you'll notice a lot of times I'm like, um, I was like, go here to the page settings. And the reason is because it's like a live preview. It's the coolest thing. So I can come in here and um, just type away with my code and see it live. Um, as an example, if I was putting, you know, a class in here, you know, for some reason, and I called it Nelson, and I was in here and, you know, We've done this in tutorials countless times where I have, you're seeing it live. Let's just do my little trick again. So there you can, like, you know, it helps you. But, but remember to, when you're done here, to copy this and go to the next step. A lot of times I'll say, put this in your theme options custom CSS box. And that's the one I'm referring to here. And I say that a lot. And I, that's because that's really easy. Um, for beginners, you know, it's a great place. Plus this works for the whole site. Okay. So when you put code here, it, it affects the whole site at once and that's best keep it all in one spot. Keep it organized. All right. Right there in that style sheet. So you can add custom CSS there and let's go ahead and show you back here under Divi theme options. Now there's two places in theme options to add code. The one for CSS is right here. 
All right, so it's down at the bottom. And by the way, just throw this in here. I have a tutorial. Um, if it's not out yet, it will be out soon on how to make this box nice and tall like this because otherwise you can't see what you're doing. Okay, that's just a little plug for my other tutorial. Up here in integration, you can see I had some script in here and that is where you would add things like jQuery, which is JavaScript, okay? So you want to add CSS where I just showed you and then any type of script. Sometimes you have meta tags. I had the tutorial on changing the mobile address bar collar. That was a meta tag. Um, I have my tutorial on um, font awesome that that adds here as well so this is a great place to add all sorts of code that affects your entire site and then the one after that is your child theme so if you don't have a child theme then definitely be putting it where I just said if you're wondering just tell me where the best place to add code is if you don't have a child theme put it in your theme options that's gonna be the best place for you if you have a child theme, put it in the child theme, okay? That's why we have the child theme. If you don't have one and you wanna get started with a really basic one, you can download ours here and click on that link. And if you're still kind of confused what child themes do, how they relate to the parent Divi theme, we have a tutorial you can click here um, and go check that out. Because I think it explains, it's actually on child themes versus layout packs, but I think it explains what child themes are really well in there. Okay, so like we said, in the child themes. So the child themes can add CSS, JavaScript, and PHP. So let's go there, and you would go there through Appearance and Theme Editor. And by the way, if you don't have Theme Editor, it's because your host or security plugin or some other admin turned it off for you. Okay, so here we are, and make sure that you're, you know, not on Divi, but on your child theme. And then you'll see that in ours, for example, we have style.css. And here is where I would put all of my CSS, okay? So like on pacreative.com, we have all of our CSS in the style.css of our child theme, okay? And it works the same way with PHP. So some of my tutorials do have PHP, especially some of those on changing um, image aspect ratios, things like that. So you're gonna wanna go there and grab the snippets and anytime I say that about adding it to your child theme, it's more than likely you're adding it to functions.php if it's, if it's some kind of code like that, okay? And I'll tell you on the tutorial. But there you go. So that's your child theme. This is where you should be adding code if you can help it, okay? The next one after a child theme would be the theme customizer or the WordPress customizer. Okay, and honestly, I don't recommend this one. This is kind of just there. It's going to be the same thing as your Divi theme option. So let's, let's just go there. Where is it? It's under, oh yeah, right here. If you're on the back end, appearance, customize. And if you were on the front end, you would go here and then click theme customizer. Okay, and here we are in this particular site. And in the, in the customizer, it's down here, additional CSS. So you can't add any other code here. This would just be CSS. But you'll notice if you remember, I had that little snippet there for some reason in the other one. Um, and so it's kind of the same place. And I just don't recommend it, but I'll tell you the only reason why I would. If if I was working somewhere and I wanted to affect, um, you know, maybe I'm working on styling my menu here on my site and I'm not working on an actual page, like like I told you before, the live view that I like, then I would I could use this. I don't even know if I ever did this, but it would work the same way. You could kind of think of it as like the live preview of whatever you're doing, but don't think of it as its permanent home. So let's just kind of get past that because I really don't see much reason for using that. And then last of all, and you may be wondering, well, what, you know, these last couple here, I'm acting like I shouldn't use, shouldn't they be at the top or something? No, because we're talking about hierarchy. These are actually at the bottom, and that may sound funny, but the other places are actually more, you know, powerful, have the higher um, specificity. Um, and then the Divi theme is just a terrible place to put it, any type of code. Let's go take a look at our Divi theme, and we could switch here. Remember, we were in here, so you just select that, select the button, and then you'll get all the code that's in the Divi theme, and you could you know, feel free if you want to um, play around and see if you can break the theme or see 
see what kind of changes you want to make, but they're not going to stay. Okay. So if we would in here to one of these CSS areas and added our custom CSS, well, anytime we, you know, would update to the next version of Divi, it's gone because we're getting the fresh version and whatever you did before it's gone. That's why we recommend using a child theme. So really this would only be maybe for developers who are experimenting, playing around, but there's really no reason to be adding code. But so think of this tutorial as a cross between where to add code, but also helping you understand the hierarchy again. So the best place to add any code is going to be in your child theme. If you don't have a child theme, then it's going to be in your theme options. So put it there. Um, if you want to work live, put it on the page. And then the code module sometimes has exemptions like adding iframes and embed codes and stuff like that, short codes, whatever. So you, it's not that it's a bad, you know, it's, it's a it's a good thing. And then sometimes there's a time and place for convenience, you know, like I showed you, changing the blurb title or other things in the advanced tabs. And then sometimes, you know, I'll even, you know, style certain things with um, in line like this. Okay, so that's the order of it. I hope this was helpful. So just keep CSS hierarchy, the specificity in mind when you're adding code and if you're wondering, you know, I added some code here or I can't override Divi here because, you know, that's probably why because it, it needs to be higher up in your um, the order, the pecking order, whatever you want to call it in lay terms here. But anyway, I hope this was helpful. Okay, so those are the places you can add custom code in Divi. So all of your CSS and JavaScript, jQuery, PHP, now you know where to put that when you find little snippets or when you're following along with our tutorials. All right, well, let us know what tutorials you would like to see next, and we'll see you guys in the next video.